Act Five of The Inconstant by George Farquhar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Fifth, Scene One The Street Before the Playhouse. Mirabel and Dortet as coming from the play. How do you like this play? Ma, I like the company. The lady, the rich beauty in the front box, had my attention. These impudent poets bring the ladies together to support them, and to kill everybody else. For death upon the stage, the ladies cry, but they are mind us that in the audience die. The poet's hero should not move their pain, for they should weep for those their eyes have slain. Hoity toity, did Phyllis inspire you with all this? Ten times more. The playhouse is the element of poetry, because the region of beauty. The ladies, methinks, have a more inspiring, triumphant air in the boxes than anywhere else. And they sit, commanding on their thrones, with all their subject slaves about them. Their best clothes, best looks, shining jewels, sparkling eyes. The treasure of the world in a ring. I could wish that my whole life long were the first night of a new play. The fellow has quite forgot this journey. Have you bespoke post-horses? Grant me but three days, dear captain. One to discover the lady, one to unfold myself, and one to make me happy. And then I'm yours to the world's end. Hadst thou the impudence to promise thyself a lady of her figure and quality in so short a time? Yes, sir. I have a confident address, no disagreeable person, and five hundred Louis d'or in my pocket. Five hundred Louis doors? You went mad. I tell you, she's worth five thousand. One of her black, brilliant eyes is worth a diamond as big as a head. But you have owned to me that, abating Oriana's pretension to marriage, you loved her passionately. Then how could you wander at this rate? I longed for a partridge the other day off the king's plate, but do you think because I could not have it I must eat nothing? Enter Oriana in boys' clothes with a letter. Is your name Mirabel, sir? Yes, sir. A letter from your uncle in Picardy. Gives the letter. Young Mirabel reads. The bearer is the son of a Protestant gentleman who, flying for his religion, left me the charge of this youth. A pretty boy. He's fond of some handsome service that may afford him opportunity of improvement. Your care of him will oblige. Yours. Has to mind to travel, child. Tis my desire, sir. I should be pleased to serve a traveller in any capacity. A hopeful inclination. You shall along with me into Italy as my page. Noise without. Too handsome. The play's done and some of the ladies come this way. La Morse without, with her train borne up by a page. Deltet, the very dear identical she. And what then? Why, tis she. And what then, sir? Then? To Oriana. Why, look ye, Sarah, the first piece of service I put upon you is to follow that lady's coach and bring me word where she lives. I don't know the town, sir, and I'm afraid of losing myself. Pshaw! Enter La Morse and Page. Page, what's become of all my people? I can't tell, ma'am. I can see no sign of your ladyship's coach. That fellow has got into his old pranks, and fallen drunk somewhere. None of the footmen there? Not one, madam. These servants are the plague of our lives. What shall I do? By all my hopes, fortune pimps for me. Now, Deltet, for a piece of gallantry. Why, you won't, sure? Won't, brute. Let not your servants neglect, madam, put your ladyship to any inconvenience, for you can't be disappointed of an equipage whilst mine waits below, and would you honour the master so far, he would be proud to pay his attendance. Aye, to be sure. Sir, I won't presume to be troublesome, for my habitation is a great way off. Very true, madam, and he's a little engaged. Besides, madam, a hackney coach will do as well, madam. Rude beast, be quiet. 
the farther from home madam the more occasion you have for a guard pray madam lard sir he seems to press she to decline it in dumb show ah the devil's in his impudence now he wheedles she smiles he flatters she simpers he swears she believes he's a rogue and she's a w in a moment but thou there my coach Deltet, wish me joy hands the lady out wish you were here you little picard go follow your master and he'll lead you whither sir to the academy child tis the fashion with men of quality to teach their pages their exercises go won't you go with him too sir that woman may do him some harm i don't like her why how now mr page do you start up to give laws of a sudden do you pretend to rise at court and disapprove the pleasure of your betters look ye sirrah if ever you would rise by a great man be sure to be with him in his little actions and as a step to your advancement follow your master immediately and make it your hope that he goes to a bagnio heavens forbid exit now would i sooner take a cart in company of the hangman than a coach with that woman what a strange antipathy have i taken against these creatures a woman to me is a version upon a version a cheese a cat a breast of mutton the squalling of children the grinding of knives and the snuff of a candle scene two lamorce's lodgings enter mirabel and lamorce to convince me sir that your service was something more than good breeding please to lay out an hour of your company upon my desire as you have already upon my necessity your desire madam has only prevented my request my hours make them yours madam eleven twelve one two three and all that belong to those happy minutes but i must trouble you sir to dismiss your retinue because an equipage at my door at this time of night will not be consistent with my reputation by all means madam all but one little boy here page enter oriana order my coach and servants home and do you stay tis a foolish country boy that knows nothing but innocence innocent sir i should be sorry if you made any sinister constructions of my freedom oh madam i must not pretend to remark upon anybody's freedom having so entirely forfeited my own well sir twere convenient towards our easy correspondence that we entered into a free confidence of each other by a mutual declaration of what we are and what we think of one another now sir what are you in three words madam i am a gentleman and have five hundred pounds in my pocket and your name is mustafa now madam the inventory of your fortunes my name is lamors my birth noble i was married young to a proud rude sullen impetuous fellow the husband spoiled the gentleman crying ruined my face till at last i took heart leaped out of a window got away to my friends sued my tyrant and recovered my fortune i lived from fifteen to twenty to please a husband from twenty to forty i am resolved to please myself and from thence upwards i'll humour the world <laughs> oh, i rejoice in your good fortune with all my heart oh now i think on it mr mustafa you have got the finest ring there i could scarcely believe it right pray let me see it hm. yes madam tis uh, tis right but 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 it was given me by my mother an old family ring madam an old-fashioned family ring ay sir if you can entertain yourself for a moment i'll wait on you immediately certainly the stars have been in a strange intriguing humour when i was born ay this night should i have had a pride in my arms and that i should like well enough but what should i have to-morrow night the same and what next the same and what next night the same soup for breakfast soup for dinner soup for supper and soup for breakfast again but here's variety i love the fair who freely gives her heart that's mine by ties of nature not of art who boldly owns whatever her thoughts indite and is too modest for a hippocrite 
Lamorse appears at the door. She comes, she comes. As he runs towards her, four bravos step in before her. He starts back. Huh? Who? Huh. Bitch! Murdered! Murdered, to be sure! The cursed strumpet! To make me send away my servants. Nobody near me! These cutthroats always make sure work. What shall I do? I have but one way. Are these gentlemen your relations, madam? Yes, sir. Gentlemen, your most humble servant. Sir, your most faithful. Your sir, with all my heart. Your most obedient. Come, gentlemen. Salutes all around. Please to sit. No ceremony. Next the lady, pray, sir. Well, sir, and how do you like my friends? They all sit. Oh, madam, the most finished gentleman. I was never more happy in good company in my life. I suppose, sir, you have travelled? Yes, sir. Which way, may I presume? In a western barge, sir. <laughs> Very pretty, facetious, pretty gentleman. <laughs> sir, you have got the prettiest ring upon your finger there. Ah, madam, tis at your service with all my heart. Offering the ring. By no means, sir, a family ring. Takes it. No matter, madam. Aside. Seven hundred pound by this light. Pray, sir, what's o'clock? Hm? Sir, I have left my watch at home. I thought I saw the string of it just now. Oh, it's my life, sir, I beg your pardon. Oh, here it is. But it don't go. Putting it up. Oh, dear, sir, an English watch. Tompions, I presume? Do you like it, madam? No ceremony. Tis at your service, with all my heart and soul. Aside. Tompions? Hang ye. But, sir, above all things, I admire the fashion and make of your sword hilt. I'm mighty glad you like it, sir. Will you part with it, sir? Sir, I won't sell it. Not sell it, sir? No, gentlemen, but I'll bestow it with all my heart. Offering it. Oh, sir, we shall rob you. Aside. That you do, I'll be sworn. I have another at home. Pray, sir. Gentlemen, you're too modest. Have I anything else that you fancy? So, will you do me a favour? To the first bravo. I am extremely in love with that hat which you wear. Will you do me the favour to change with me? Look ye, sir. This is a family hat, and I would not part with it. But if you like it... They change hats. Aside. I want but a handsome pretence to quarrel with him. Some wine. Sir, your good health. Pulls Mirabel by the nose. Oh, sir, you're a most humble servant. A pleasant frolic enough to drink a man's health and pull him by the nose. <laughs> oh, the pleasantest, pretty humoured gentleman. Help the gentleman to a glass. Mirabel drinks. How'd you like the wine, sir? Very good of the kind, sir. But I tell you what, I find we're all inclined to be frolicsome. Decaf, for my own part, I was never more disposed to be merry. Let's make a night on't, ha? Huh? This wine is pretty, but I have such burgundy at home. Look ye, gentlemen, let me send for half a dozen flasks of my burgundy. I defy France to match it. It will make us all life, all air. Pray, gentlemen. Eh? Shall us have his burgundy? Yes, faith, we'll have all we can. Here, call up the gentleman's servant. Exit footman. What think you, Lamorse? Yes, yes. Your servant is a foolish country boy, sir. He understands nothing but innocence. Aye, aye, madam. Here, page. Enter Oriana. Take this key and go to my butler. Order him to send half a dozen flasks of the red burgundy, marked a thousand. And be sure you make haste. I long to entertain my friends here. My very good friends. 
Ah, uh, dear sir. Ah, dear sir. Ah, dear, ah, dear sir. sir. Here, child, take a glass of wine. Your master and I have changed hats, honey, in a frolic. Where had you this pretty boy, honest Mustafa? Mustafa! Out of Picardy. This is the first errand he has made for me, and if he does it right, I will encourage him. The red burgundy, sir. The red, marked a thousand, and be sure you make haste. I shall, sir. Exit. Sir, you were pleased to like my hats. Have you any fancy for my coat? Look ye, sir. It has served a great many honest gentlemen very faithfully. The insolence of these dogs is beyond their cruelty. Your melancholy, sir. Only concern, madam, that I should have no servant here but this little boy. He'll make some confounded blunder. I lay my life on't. I will not be disappointed in my wine for the universe. He'll do well enough, sir. But supper's ready. Will you please to eat a bit, sir? Oh, madam, I never had a better stomach in my life. Come then, we have nothing but a plate of soup. Aside. Ah, oh, the marriage soup I could dispense with now. Exit, handing the lady. Shall we dispatch him? To be sure. I think he knows me. Aye, aye. Dead men tell no tales. I hadn't the confidence to look a man in the face after I had done him an injury. Therefore, we'll murder him. Exeunt. Scene 3. Old Mirabel's House. Enter Duartet. My friend has forsaken me. I have abandoned my mistress. My time lies heavy upon my hands, and my money burns in my pocket. But now I think on't, my myrmidons are upon duty to-night. I'll fairly stroll down to the guard, and nod away the night with my honest lieutenant over a flask of wine, a story, and a pipe of tobacco. Going off, Bizarre meets him. Who comes there? Stand. Hey, day. Now she's turned dragoon. Look ye, sir, I'm told you intend to travel again. I design to wait on you as far as Italy. Then I'll travel into Wales. Wales? What country is that? The land of mountains, child, where you're never out of the way, cause there's no such thing as a high road. Rather always in a high road, because you travel all upon hills. But be it as it will, I'll jog along with you. But we intend to sail to the East Indies. East or West, tis all one to me. I'm tight and light, and the fitter for sailing. But suppose we take through Germany and drink hard. Suppose I take through Germany and drink harder than you. Suppose I go to a bawdy house. <laughs> suppose I show you the way. It's death, woman. Will you go to the guard with me and smoke a pipe? Allons donc. The devil's in the woman. Suppose I hang myself. There I'll leave you. And the happy riddance, the gallows, is welcome. Hold, hold, sir. Catches him by the arm, going. One word before we part. Let me go, madam, or I shall think that you're a man, and perhaps may examine you. Stir, if you dare. I have still spirits to attend me, and can raise such a muster of fairies as shall punish you to death. Come, sir, stand there now, and ogle me. He frowns upon her. Now a languishing sigh. He groans. Now run and take my fan. Faster. He runs and takes it up. Now play with it handsomely. Aye, aye. He tears it all in pieces. Hold, hold, dear humorous coxcomb. Captain, spare my fan and I'll... Why, you rude inhuman monster, don't you expect to pay for this? Yes, madam. There's twelve pence, for that is the price on't. Sir, it cost a guinea. Well, madam, you shall have the sticks again. Throws them to her and exit. <laughs> Ridiculous, below my concern. 
I must follow him, however, to know if he can give me any news of Oriana. Exit. Scene four. Lamorse's lodgings. Enter young Mirabel. Bloody hellhounds! I overheard you. Was not I two hours ago the happy, gay, rejoicing Mirabel? How did I plume my hopes in a fair coming prospect of a long scene of years? Life courted me with all the charms of vigor, youth, and fortune. To be torn away from all my promised joys is more than death. The manner, too, by villains. O oh, my Oriana, this very moment might have blessed me in thy arms. And my poor boy, the innocent boy, confusion. But hush, they come. I must dissemble still. And no news of my wine, gentlemen. Enter the four bravos. No, sir. I believe your country booby has lost himself, and we can wait no longer for it. True, sir, you're a pleasant gentleman, but I suppose you understand our business. Sir, I may go near to guess at your employments. You, sir, are a lawyer, I presume. You a physician, you a scrivener, and you a stock jobber. Aside. Oh, cutthroat sea cat. Sir, I am a broken officer. I was cashiered at the head of the army for a cowed. So I took up the trade of murder to retrieve the reputation of my courage. I am a soldier, too, and would serve my king. But I don't like the quarrel, and I have more honor than to fight in a bad cause. I was bred a gentleman and have no estate, but I must have my whore and my bottle through the prejudice of education. I am a ruffian, too. By the prejudice of education, I was born a butcher. In short, sir, if your wine had come, we might have trifled a little longer. Come, sir, which sword will you fall by? Mine, sir? Draws. Or mine? Draws. Or mine? Draws. Or mine? Draws. I scorn to beg my life, but to be butchered thus? Knocking. Oh, there's the wine. This moment for my life or death. Enter Oriana. Lost. Forever lost. Where's the wine, child? Coming up, sir. Stamps. Enter Dortet with his sword drawn, and six of the Grand Musketeers with their pieces presented. The ruffians drop their swords. Oriana goes off. The wine! The wine! The wine! Youth, pleasure, fortune, days and years are now my own again. Oh, my dear friends, did not I tell you this wine would make me merry? Dear Captain, these gentlemen are the best-natured, facetious, witty creatures that ever you knew. Enter La Morse. Is the wine come, sir? Oh, yes, madam, the wine is come. See there. Pointing to the soldiers. Your ladyship has got a very fine ring upon your finger. Sir, tis at your service. Oh, is it so? Thou dear seven hundred pound, thou'rt welcome home again with all my heart. That's my life, madam. You have got the finest built watch there. Tompions, I presume. Sir, you may wear it. Oh, madam, by no means tis too much. Rob you of all. Taking it from her. Good dear time, thou art a precious thing. I'm glad I have achieved thee. Putting it up. What, my friends neglected all this while? Gentlemen, you'll pardon my complacence to the lady. How now? Is it civil to be so out of humour at my entertainment, and I so pleased with yours? Captain, you are surprised at all this. But we're in our frolics, you must know. There's some wine here. Enter servant with wine. Come, Captain, this worthy gentleman's health. Tweaks the first bravo by the nose. He roars. But now, where? Where's my dear deliverer? My boy, my charming boy. I hope some of our crew below stairs have dispatched him. Villain, what sayest thou? Dispatched? 
I'll have you all tortured, racked, torn to pieces alive if you have touched my boy. Here, page, page, page. Runs out. Here, gentlemen, be sure you secure those fellows. Yes, sir. We know you and your guard will be very civil to us. Take them to justice. The guards carry off the bravos. Now for you, madam. He, he, he. I'm so pleased to think that I shall be revenged on one woman before I die. Well, Mrs. Snapdragon, which of these honourable gentlemen is so happy to call you wife? Sir, she should have been mine tonight, cause Sam pray here at her last night. Sir, she's very true to us all four. Enter old Mirabel, Dugard, and Bizarre. Robin, Robin! Where's Bob? Where's my boy? What, is this the lady? A pretty creature in faith. Harky, child, because my son was so civil as to oblige you with a coach, I'll treat you with a cart, indeed I will. Ay, hey, madam, and you shall have a swinging equipage, three or four thousand footmen at your heels at least. No less becomes her quality. Ah, oh, the monster! monster ay you're all a little monstrous let me tell you enter young mirabel ah my dear bob art thou safe man no no sir i am ruined the savour of my life is lost no he came and brought us the news but where is he enter oriana ha runs and embraces her my dear preserver what shall I do to recompense your trust? Father, friends, gentlemen, behold the youth that has relieved me from the most ignominious death. Command me, child, before you all, before my late, so kind, indulgent stars, I swear to grant whatever you ask. To the same stars, indulgent now to me, I will appeal as to the justice of my claim. I shall demand but what was mine before the just performance of your contract to oriana discovering herself oriana 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 in this disguise i resolve to follow you abroad counterfeit to that letter that brought me into your service and so by the strange turn of fate i became the instrument of your preservation few common servants would have had such cunning my love inspired me with the meaning of your message because my concern for your safety made me suspect your company. Mirabel, you're caught. Caught? I scorn the thought of imposition. Caught? <laughs> no, tis my voluntary act. This was no human stratagem, but by my providential stars, designed to show the dangers wandering youth incurs for the pursuit of an unlawful love, to plunge me headlong in the snares of vice, and then to free me by the hands of virtue. Here, on my knees, I humbly beg my fair preserver's pardon. My thanks are needless, for myself I owe. And now, forever, do protest me yours. Tall Alderdal, kiss me, daughter. No, you shall kiss me first. To La Morse. For you're the cause, aunt. Well, Bizarre, what say you to the captain? I like the beast well enough, but I don't understand his paces so well as to venture him in a strange road. But marriage is so beaten a path that you can't go wrong. Aye, tis so beaten that the way is spoiled. There is but one thing should make me thy husband. I could marry thee to-day for the privilege of beating thee to-morrow. Come, come, you may agree for all this. Mr. Degard, are not you pleased with this? So pleased, that, if I thought it might secure your son's affection to my sister, I would double her fortune. Fortune? Has she not given me mine? My life, estate, my all? And what is more, her virtuous self? Behold the foil pointing to Lamorse, that sets this brightness off to oriana 
Here view the pride. To Oriana. And scandal of the sex. What liberty can be so tempting there? To La Morse. As a soft, virtuous, amorous bondage here. To Oriana. The end. End of Act 5. End of The Inconstant by George Farquhar.